Hey everyone, I am Carolise. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to this video. Today we're talking about more agile stuff. We're going to be discussing documentation in agile, right? We're going to talk about that because this is a big topic that has been going around for a while now. And I thought it's time for us to address it here on my channel. So what are the documents that you're producing in agile? But mainly, how do you handle people who are insisting on upfront documentation even when they're in an agile environment? Yes, that's what we're talking about today. Come on in, come on in, come on in. It's going to be very, very interesting. So, um, you know, a lot of people are working in agile and because Agile is Agile, we can literally do what we want, right? And still call it Agile, right? It's just following these principles that are established by, you know, the Agile methodology. But it doesn't really tie you down to a specific process. You know, people are following Scrum. People are following Kanban. They're doing all kinds of stuff. And everybody needs to pick what works for them. If you work in an environment with lots of developers, you know, a huge team, a product team, a project team, and there's lots of levels of approvals and all that stuff, you know, getting changes out faster, obviously is a challenge. And so you have to do whatever works for you. And also keeping up with the, the vast number of things. Like for example, if you're working on multiple products, multiple software, multiple processes that can be very complicated, then they're gonna have a different process, of course, than if it's a small shop with just one product and a few people managing it, right? So everybody has to do what works for them. But I've just found that people who are transitioning into Agile or people who have just just been used to documenting everything up front, they are very, very hard to, to convince that the Agile process in its purest form works, right? So you'll find people who are just married. They're just married to documentation up front. And it's so hard to break that. Like there's no point in trying to make an agile process as waterfall as possible. Like that's how I feel it's happening. I feel like they have waterfall syndrome. In one of my previous jobs, we had this, this, I would call this person like the, the documentation czar, you know, <laughs> you had to write, we were in waterfall. We knew we were in waterfall and working in waterfall and we had offshore teams and we had to write the documentation for the enhancements and improvements that we wanted to make and the features and stuff and ship that over to that country that we were working with. And then they didn't speak English. So <laughs> then they had to, you had to make sure everything was perfectly clear. And the whole sending this huge document overseas, them spending some time, they're in a different time zone, different language, different culture, everything. So they understood it their way. Then they would come back to us with some questions and we send back to them and hear from them the next day because you know, the night, you know, the time zone difference. And everything was just hard. But we had a documentation czar who would review your document before you sent it to the offshore team and would pick at every little thing because you can't write the requirements without saying the user must if you put the user should or users are able to like it's like no that's not how you write your requirements it has to have this language it has to be this exact way and blah craziness and then they were very strict on the on the diagram so you had to make sure you had your uml diagrams in your document and all these things, fishbone dagger, like some things that, yes, you can use them, but it's like extra, you know, it's like extra, it's like extra. So those people are just married to documentation, really they are. And so if you're in a waterfall environment, that's somewhat expected that you need to have this heavy documentation up front. But when you get into an agile environment and you're finding the same thing, you're like, oh my God, like what is wrong? <laughs> And I've encountered that sometimes, you know, um, that people mainly they want you to write the documentation for the enhancements, the features, the innovations, whatever you're coming up with. Um, you want to document all of that, document all the decisions that were made along the way, um, you know, whatever we phased it out to be, that's all documented, and then go write user stories. So it's almost like double work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they're taking out of the agile process the whole concept of just more conversation. They're just saying, have the conversations 
and document up front and also write user stories. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why, why? Why should we do all that? Why? I mean, part of it is that you really want to make sure that you track all the decisions that were made. And it's not uncommon, to be honest. A lot of people do it this way because they want to know what are what is everything that has to do with this 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 feature and they want to go to one place to find all of that they want to find a, a single place where all the the decisions about this feature has been made all the you know the designs the mock-ups are all there everything is there now that's really what the epic should be the epics should be where that that one place all the stories are are grouped together but it may not include the use case it may not include like additional notes and different decisions and you know you know, maybe technical notes and stuff like that. They may not include all of that. So it's really a, a step to help maybe management or um, just in terms of in, in, the, in the future to have a place to go back to and see why we did what we did. So I understand the value of it. I get the value of it. Um, on the flip side of that though, if you're trying to just churn out results as opposed to get yourself bogged down in the details if you're having the conversations and you're facilitating understanding so you've already spoken to them spoken to the business you understand what they're trying to accomplish you get the use case and you may have written at sometimes i'll write a use case document just to say this is what they're doing right now this is how we expect to improve that so that documentation is happening anyway but sometimes to be forced to have this document up front, it really does feel like waterfall. Yeah, it does feel like waterfall. And so I get the value of it, but it's more like an internal value. And this is the reason why we all got out of waterfall because everything was valuable in waterfall too. I mean, having everything documented up front and your client agreed to it is great. Because now you know you have you have you have an artifact to prove that yes, this is what you're doing. But the challenge is that as you get into implementation of whatever you agreed on, things change. It always does. So as things are changing, whatever you documented might just quickly become obsolete. So imagine spending all this time writing this big document, getting everybody to read it, you know, forwarding to whoever and agreeing and agreeing until the end of the world. And as, as soon as it gets into development, then you're like, oh, well, we got to change this and change that. Now you find yourself maintaining two places. You got to maintain the tickets that have changed. Then you got to maintain this document. And then by the time the whole thing is done, it might be a whole different thing from what you started out with. <laughs> and then you got to write, feature documentation on that training and other stuff. So Agile is not saying that there is no documentation. We always have documentation in Agile. You do your presentations, you do your use case document, and you write your user stories. But the point is, you're not forced to have this big document that could take you weeks and weeks to write that at the end of the day might just change, right? So you, you, you cut that time out and you spend time talking instead. And I think it's a great method. So I really prefer to document after we've built it. So we know exactly what it is. <laughs> I like documenting certain parts of it upfront, like the use case. Why are we doing this? What is it that it, they're doing now? And what do we hope that they could do in the future? And I like to document decisions. And these are things you can document in the stories or in the epics as well. So you don't have to have this big word document that's just flying around uh, or even in Confluence or SharePoint or wherever you put your documents today. You don't really have to have that. You can find a way to infuse it. I mean, the information is already there in Agile. It's not like you're coming up with new information. It's just the insistence of waterfall czars <laughs> or documentation czars of having something tangible up front. It's almost as if it's for their own benefit. It's almost as if I want to have something I can refer to because this project is very complex. All kinds of decisions are being made and I don't want to sift through multiple tickets to try to figure that out. And it's a valid case. It's a very valid case. Um, whether we document inside of an epic for that feature or whatever, or you do a confluence page or you do a Word document, it's the only challenge I have with it is trying to make agile more waterfall is to me a little bit backward. And we all know the, 
the, the disadvantages of waterfall. So trying to mix them both, I think personally, I don't know if that's the most valuable thing to do. It's not the best use of, of, of our times as business analysts. Um, I think we should do what works though for our organization. If we're in a large company and we can't keep track of things and we need to know what decisions are being made and we need one single source that everybody can see, fine, by all means, go ahead. But it shouldn't be imposed on every team to, to especially business analyst team, to do the documentation and do the conversations and do the user stories. Like, <laughs> they're, just, they're just piling it on on you, right? <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't make sense, in my opinion. You should do Agile as the way it was intended, which is conversation. Talk it out. Talk to the developers. Call them. Make sure they understand. And then, of course, you can say, this is the agreement. You put that in the user story or you can even have your own document that you keep um, somewhere that, that's easily findable. So I'm not saying you don't document at all. I'm just saying writing these business requirements documents and then also writing user stories is just double. And I don't think it's a good use of our times. So I would say, you know, that's just my rant on, on documentation in Agile. In my opinion, my recommendation is that the user stories are written and they have the correct acceptance criteria. You could document the use case in the Epic itself if you're doing Jira or if you're using um, like a, Excel sheet. I don't know what you use to manage your user stories, but whatever you're using, there's a place that hosts all of the individual stories and tasks. That place has a description somewhere. It has to, and you can put the use case in there. Decisions can go in there. So there's all, everything is all in one place, but it doesn't have to go to the level of a big BRT document with overview and all the different sections. You can go to my website and see a, an example that you can download for yourself of a BRD. All of those sections and all the different things that's spelled out, it's great for waterfall, but it, I think it's just overkill for Agile. It's really overkill. Document decisions and stuff like that in your epics or even inside individual stories. Um, you can track tasks or whatever in conference if you feel like, but the extent of writing a full-fledged BRD and then writing user stories is madness. <laughs> In my opinion, my humble opinion, it's madness. <laughs> and you shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't be doing it. And I bet you the person who wants you to do it is a documentation czar. And the only reason they want you to do it is because they themselves need to know what you're doing or they don't know the process and they want some document that they can refer to. Um, and it's just because they love documentation. That's why Agile does require it and you shouldn't be forced to do it. <laughs> so that's just my rant, guys. Let me know if you agree. Go on in the comment section and put your comments down there. And while they're down there, please like and subscribe. Okay, like and subscribe. And uh, check out my other videos and check out my website. I have free business analysis courses up there that talk about more stuff with Agile and other topics. So go check that out. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.